Skyrim modding has been exploding these past few years, with the rise of crazy new advancements in modding technology and amazing mod ideas being created every day. In fact, Skyrim Special Edition has recently reached 1.1 billion mods on the Nexus. But when this many great mods appear at the same time, some of them get largely unnoticed by the community and don't get the attention they deserve. In the series, I'm showcasing six top quality mods every week that have been missed by the community, but fortunately discovered by me. Some of these mods are game changers this week. You're gonna love them. This is Skyrim Mods Hidden Gems, week two. Let's start at the first hidden gem. With a criminally low 700 downloads, I present Vin Exports Ice Claws by Ixian the 17th. This mod adds over 300 collectible ice claws all over the world of Skyrim. Ice claws are small frigid mushrooms, which increase the consumer's carry weight by a small amount when eaten. Each ice claw has been carefully placed by the mod author in secret or hidden locations all across the map. Due to their bright blue color, they are easy to spot when in line of sight, which is why they're hidden up high, down low, and generally in places where you wouldn't think to look. Chances are, you'll only find a fraction of them throughout your whole playthrough, unless you're a particularly observant individual. Adding this scavenger hunt of sorts to Skyrim works especially well with the game, since exploration of the open world is a core part of Skyrim's philosophy. The extra carry weight is a welcome reward for all types of players, and the amount it increases can be customized the first time you pick up one of these mushrooms, from 0.25 all the way to 2 additional carry weight from each ice claw. Even if you aren't a collect em all type player, this mod is a great addition to any playthrough. Our second mod adds a new spell type, reminiscent of a certain popular game. This is Portal, Dynamically Placed Teleportation by At Ducey and Kevkus, with 2500 downloads. Within a locked display case in Farangar's room, you will find two spell tomes, a dark portal tome and a light portal tome. Like the famous Valve game, walking through one portal will cause you to teleport out of the other portal. Two interconnected portals can be traveled between instantly in the same location, but also in a different location, even across Skyrim, in which case there will be a loading screen. This works as an excellent replacement for the Mark and Recall spells which were present in the previous Elder Scrolls games, and even adds more utility as you can travel both ways through the portals. Be aware of how you use the spells, however, as until you cast a new portal, the portals will stay where they are forever. You can create some super entertaining situations using these portals on NPCs, or shooting projectiles through them, or you can simply use them to roleplay a supremely powerful mage. Be careful though, these spells aren't a free get out of jail card during combat, as they take some time to charge up. Nevertheless, playing around with these portals is a great time that I highly recommend. Perhaps a more tempered reaction might be called for? Oh, yes, of course, you were right. Falk, tell Captain Aldous I said to assign a few extra soldiers to Dragonbridge. Oh, what happened? Next up, a warm and rustic player home. Wuthrein, an ancient Nordic hideout, by Leptinaz, with 4,000 downloads. Wuthrein differs from most player home mods in that it is a small, functional, and detailed home. Located on the banks of the White River, Wuthrein is named for the sound of the waters that once flowed through it, 
old roar. Waters that are said to be capable of curing any disease. But does any remain? This home contains myriad crafting apparatus, with the exception of a smelter, and plenty of safe storage for a budding healer, mage, scholar, or a true Nord following the old ways. Consisting of only three small chambers, this player home is literally a cleared out Nordic ruin, and is the perfect place for someone looking for a comfy, antique atmosphere, with a backstory and some lore to go with it. The previous owner may have met an unfortunate end, but that only means the now restored Wuth Rhine is ready to shelter its next resident. For our fourth hidden gem, we have a unique variant on an existing armor set. I'm talking about Veterans Dragon Scale Armor by Kyrgyz Guitarist with 2000 downloads. Like the mod author, when I look at the vanilla dragon scale armor, the only words that come to mind are ugly and dorky. Luckily, we have Kyrgyz Guitarist to rectify this problem with his unique take on it, Veterans Dragon Scale. Immediately, you'll notice the difference. Among other things, the helmet horns have been made less goofy, a face mask adds more protection to the wearer's face, the steel trim is darker, and the whole color scheme of the armor has been darkened, creating a two-tone color effect. The waist armor has been lengthened, and the shoulder sash and undercloak give the armor a more royal feel, and an especially menacing silhouette. I still can't believe the Dragonborn's reward for killing dragons and becoming a master blacksmith was the dorky, plasticky dragon scale armor we've seen for so many years. Now the armor feels right, and fulfills both of its intended roles as a showpiece for the Dragonborn to wear around town, as well as a tremendously protected bulwark to shield the Dragonborn from the most violent of attacks. The mod comes either as a craftable variant of the vanilla dragon scale, or a replacer version which removes the vanilla dragon scale in favor of the new set. Check this mod out. Next, a massive mod that will spice up your game world. Legendary Cities, The Elder Scrolls Arena, Skyrim Frontier Fortress. This mod by Jobber, with 30,000 downloads, adds up to seven new cities or villages to the world, complete with functioning shops, homes, yarls, and, of course, fully populated with new NPCs with daily schedules in each respective new city. There are seven ESP files, one for each city, so on the one hand it is quite a lot, however this also means you can pick and choose which cities you want in your game and which ones you don't. Altogether, the brand new cities are North Keep in Falkreath Hold, Amal in Winterhold, Pargrin Village in East March, Vernum Wood on the Rift Eastmarch border, Dunstad Grove in Hjalmarch, Nemalton in the Rift, and last but not least, my favorite, Granite Hall in the Reach. One thing that makes these cities quite interesting is that they are in fact lore-friendly settlements in Skyrim. Way back in the first Elder Scrolls, Arena, you could actually go to all the provinces of Tamriel, and in Skyrim we saw quite a few more settlements than exist in the vanilla Skyrim game today. All of the settlements present in this mod come from that map, and are actually found in the exact locations where they would appear in the game. Visiting each city, you'll find that they're each very detailed and crafted quite well. Nothing is out of place, and exploring these small settlements is surprisingly fun each time you do it. There's a wide variety in the architecture and layouts of these settlements. From the cramped streets of North Keep, to the glorified town square that is Dunstad Grove, to the underdeveloped mill community of Pargrin Village, to the inner city of Granite Hall, which continues into the mountainside, 
torches illuminating ancient Dwemer doors which now serve as the gateways into family homes. Though these cities lack a story, the mod actually does contain a few quests, and aside from that, every city NPC is Radiant Quest enabled, so any mods or vanilla Radiant Quests have a chance to take place in these cities. To be frank, the high ESP count may make this mod seem like a pain, but I highly recommend including at least a few in your load order. I have four of the cities myself, and honestly, the difference it makes to the game is really quite something. Don't skip this one. And lastly, we have Aero Limiter SSE by Lofgren, with 4,000 downloads. A very simple mod, Aero Limiter SSE limits the amount of arrows and bolts you can carry at one time. The default amount of arrows is 24, and the default amount of bolts is 36. In your MCM menu, you can adjust the limits up or down as you desire. I absolutely adore this mod for adding a bit of immersive realism to my playthroughs. Since quivers cannot hold the hundreds of arrows you can acquire in Skyrim, and adding weight to each arrow is a bit obnoxious in my opinion, this mod is the perfect middle ground. It's simple, customizable, and can even help you roleplay as a ranger or a similar character who has limited resources. This mod can really change the way you play the game causing you to rely on multiple weapons, for example. And I personally increase the amount of arrows my Dragonborn can hold periodically as I level up the archery skill tree, which is a nice reward and incentive to level up my skills. A mod like this would function well in a load order focused on survival or realism, but even if you like your Skyrim as more of a fantasy game, you might still want to try this mod out. You might enjoy it. That concludes week two of Skyrim Mods Hidden Gems. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe for more hidden gems next week, and be sure to endorse any of the mods from this video that you enjoy. Remember to stay tuned because my new upcoming series will be all about the absolute best mod combinations to create your own unique builds and stories in the world of Skyrim, starting with the first mod build, The Witcher.